Moses. Never in the history of human civilization has there been a more enigmatic individual. Try to think of any individual, real or legend, who has had more amazing things said about him and what he did. According to legend, he led the Israelites to freedom from slavery in Egypt by releasing God's wrath on the Egyptians with a series of plagues. <laughs> and then he met with God in the mountains where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, the artifact that was eventually carried in the Ark of the Covenant and which was used to defeat the enemies of the Israelites in battle after battle using mysterious powers. And Moses had God split the Red Sea, parting the waters, so that the Israelites could make their final escape from the land of Egypt. Those are among the most astounding accomplishments of any human ever told. But there also feels like there is an energy associated with this target. It feels like the energy is resonating out from this area. Something's happening with the central subject. He's, he's male, but he has an emotional flavor or vibration of a very powerful woman. Um, he's either wrinkled or he has lines on his face. Very distinctive facial features, uh, very uh, dark, dark hair, long, long wardrobe. The wardrobe, uh, is very Egyptian or African-like, robe-like. And the energy, yeah, it feels very powerful, very esoteric, radiating outwards. It feels like it's alive, godlike, communicative. Um, I get the essential feeling that this energy can be used for different things. Um, it could be used for destruction, for powerful things, um, but it has other reaches to it as well. That's one of the reasons why it's stored away. It's kept secret. It's protected. Uh, so there's the, the pyramid-shaped structures, the level-based surface, and behind me, the regular structures. It seems like the more frightened subjects that are closer towards the structures, they seem to sort of engage in a panic amongst themselves. A lot of communication uh, and aimless meandering. But Looking at the other one, the other one seems to have received some sort of communication in some way, but it has, this subject has decided to move in a direct direction towards the uh, craft that has landed within the mountainous area. This new project conducted at the Farsight Institute employs three remote viewers who are among the most experienced and highly trained viewers existing today. Daz Smith, Aziz Brown, and Princess Janae. The remote viewers all describe the same thing. Three totally corroborating reports. Moreover, all of the remote viewing was done totally solo and blind, and none of the remote viewers communicated with one another during the data collection phase of the project. Uh, the center subject, the central subject is surrounded by people, by pyramids. Uh, there's an object in his hands that he's holding. It's a powerful object. Uh, it it, it kind of reminds me of crystals. A surprise event is happening, uh, happens to this society. Uh, feels airborne, feels catastrophic, feels like it destroys the entire society and all that seems to be left behind uh, uh, if I move ahead in time are structures. It seems like the, the civilization actually dies out. The structures remain. Seems like outside there's a lot of chaos. Uh, subjects uh, moving about, uh, crowds, uh, frantic, um, just a lot of uh, these booming, rumbling, explosive sounds with towers of light just rising out from the ground where these things are happening. 
I see a mist or cloud of some sort, uh, a large gas cloud maybe. I'm going to try to see exactly where this gas cloud came from, so I'm moving to the source of the gas cloud. And there's a non-surface structure, very man-made um, object. It's releasing like a chemtrail, like it's moving, and it, it reminds me of a chemtrail with the airplanes. Uh, it's hovering. It's not flying. It's, it's just here hovering, um, releasing this mist. Uh, it's causing a rain. It appears to be causing a rain that contaminates the water. Some of the rocks seem to hit right here in the water, sending just towers of not so much visible water, but just uh, the water seems very shallow. So the Water gets rocketed into the air and then a tidal wave of dirt and mudish stuff gets rocketed up with it with incredible force. The object hits the water and the subjects are walking towards the impact. And again, there's just little to no water where they are. So they're able to cross over to the other side of the crater. The bottom line is that Moses had outside help, a lot of it, and it was help that even he may not have understood. The object is natural that hits the water. Uh, the object feels like it was controlled while being while coming down. It feels controlled. It doesn't feel like it's aimingly out of place. Um, it's artificial structure that's controlling the object. We now know more about who actually did it, who pulled off one of the most important civilization redirections in the history of humanity. Here, told through riveting remote viewing recorded live on video for the first time are three eyewitness accounts of what actually happened in the distant past. We now know what caused the great plagues that affected Egypt, and we now know that there really was an artifact that we call the Ten Commandments. We know where it came from, and we know that it included off-world technology. We know that the Israelites really did cross the Red Sea to escape from the Egyptians, and we now know how the Red Sea parted so that the Israelites could run across. These are no longer mysteries. It all makes sense once you look at these remote viewing sessions. It sort of seems like this structure pulled this structure using some sort of unseen force. I don't know if it, it was like a magnet. It, it sort of just attracted this structure to just move alongside of it from this collection of rocky asteroids, like the asteroid belt. It sort of just grabbed it and just moved it a really far distance until it got to the planet that uh, contained the inhabitants with the uh, river and the structures and it seemed like at that point hovering above it there's this moment where this sort of energy cuts off and like a laser is just shot and makes this impact which fragments this entire rock into many many different pieces but it's not like they explode in all directions they explode in a cone-like shape almost like a shotgun this is not science fiction told through riveting remote viewing conducted under clean scientific conditions this is one of the most amazing true stories ever told anywhere the legends make sense now. The Exodus story finally makes sense.